Okay, good evening everyone. My name is Ahmed Hussein, CAF Media Officer for March number 157 of the Total Energies CAF Confederation Cup between Young Africans and Marmo Gallants. With me, I've got the head coach, Dylan Kerr, who is here for Marmo Gallants and is to give us his views about the post match. Coach, you're welcome. Your views, then we can take up the questions from the media. Um, good afternoon, uh, uh, everybody, and uh, it's nice to be back in Tanzania. You know, after a long time, I love this country, I love the people, I love the football. Um, my thoughts this game should have been over after 75 minutes. We should have had, we had four good opportunities. We controlled the game. I thought the, fan, I thought the players were fantastic. Um, the, the way that they moved the ball, the way that they opened up the younger midfield and, and was able to get in behind their back four. But the finishing, the finishing is, the, is what counts in football. And unfortunately, you know, the, 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 the occasions that we have good chances, and I mean good chances, unopposed chances, and we don't take them chances, then you're always going to be under pressure from the anger, especially from the supporters. Once they get behind them, it lifts the team. It's, 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 it's amazing. And they get the ball from a breakaway and, and, and score the first goal. And to manage that, you know, we 1-0, one 1-0 nil, one is good enough. We, can, we kept going, we kept trying, but to concede a second and the way the second was conceded, it's basically football suicide. You do not leave one player at the back and, and send everybody up, especially in the last minutes of the game. But I can't fault the players for their energy. Um, sometimes the football that they played were fantastic. But once again, it happened at Pyramids away in Egypt. We had four good chances to score and we only scored one goal. Today we didn't score any. And from, from people who are on form, from people who are trying to get golden boot in calf, in the confederations and um, they've got to do better and maybe maybe the um, maybe the players were overwhelmed by the supporters here at Yanga but I thought honestly I thought there was only one team especially in the second half towards the first half we got into the game I just thought had we scored them goals we'd have got one we'd have got two we'd probably got three and maybe four but unfortunately you know, credit to Yanga, they, they, they took, they had, I think they had two shots uh, at goal uh, in the first half, Ruby's there to save them, and they had two shots, one at the bar, and one scored, and then obviously the breakaway at the end. So yeah, so disappointing to concede the second goal, but disappointing that we, we, didn't, we didn't win the game, we had the chances to win the game. Okay, can we take two questions for the head coach, Dylan Carr, questions for the coach. My name is Juma Mohammed from Channel 10. Coach, congratulations for the good game and a very good entertaining game. But at the end of the day, you lose 2-0. How it's hard to play versus Yanga. And uh, you are, your team was very weak, especially in the third part of, the, uh, of, of your team. I mean, in its tracking zone. You cannot uh, uh, score the, the, the goals for the chance you created. How it's hard to play versus Yanga. And uh, how can I talk about the next game? because you have been down for the 2-0. Well, as you saw, it's not hard to play against Yanga. You know, you come to Yanga, like I said, the supporters uh, are that 12th man. You know, and I thought we, 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 we handled the game defensively the first half very, very well. But we didn't really play at our tempo. You know, we, the tempo, we, we, we kind of slowed the game down, which then allowed Yanga to get him, you know, into a good shape. But in the second half, as you could see, we picked we picked the midfield apart, we got them wide, we got in behind them, and unfortunately that final third is, is, is where your bread and butter is in football and we didn't we didn't convert the chances. You know, the, the breakaway for Yanga's goal, we we said in the briefing that we've only got a couple of players that can actually, you know, cause your problems. The guy wide and the and the, and the number nine. You know, we kept the number nine very, very quiet today. You know, yeah, he had that one chance 
uh, in the second half way at the bar, a couple of chances, but the keeper's there to save them. He didn't really, you know, threaten us and we weren't frightened by him. But at the end of the day, I've got to look at the chances that we missed. And obviously, I'll, the, the last 45 minutes, well, 30 minutes, because 75 minutes, we were in control. We were, we were, we took the game to Yanga. To come here and take the game to Yanga is different class. Unfortunately, don't score goals, you don't win games. So now we've made it very, very difficult for ourselves, conceding that second goal. But the players in that dressing room are very optimistic that we can still get a result in South Africa. Okay, final question for the coach. Uh, congratulations, coach. Do you think it was an issue of lack of focus in the last four or five minutes that led to conceding this goal? And now as we head back to your home field advantage, do you think the 12th man, the fans, would help you, uh, you know, at least do a bit of uh, performance? We haven't got that. We don't have this. We don't have this. You know, this is what I said to do. I, I made sure that the players knew what kind of atmosphere this, this was, you know, and, and it's very, it's not intimidating like North Africa, you know, these fans enjoy, it. There's, there's no, there's not that kind of, you know, intimidation factor, you know, there's no flares, there's no fireworks, um, so, but I, I, I filled them in on how these supporters, as you know, both Simba and Yanga are very, very well supported, but I'm not on the bench, and I, and I can, I know how to do things on the bench. That last five minutes, you know, we don't have to, we don't have to try and force his way back in. You know, one nil, one nil we'll take. You know, we, 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 I don't fault the players, they kept going, they kept going. But I'm screaming up in the stand, you know, we've got, and I can't do anything. We've got one at the back, if it, if it breaks down, which it did, and we nearly, we nearly got away with it. You know, we nearly got away with it. Credit to the defender and the goalkeeper. Um, he, he managed to get up and, and, and put the ball in the net. But I can't follow the, the, the players keep going. I mean, we've played, I think, 11 games in 34 days. And we've traveled to two different African countries. I can't fault the players for their effort and the energy. What I can fault them for is, is what we do time and time and time again in South African football, in African football. We don't have this quality striker that can finish, that can get 20, 25 goals. I'll finger Harlem, how many goals have we got? I mean, we, we can't compare. But that's what our strikers have got to aim for. That's what they've got to look at. But like I say, it's, it's very difficult when I'm in the stand with the, with the younger fans, um, who were good, by the way. They were very good, by the way. You know. Okay. Thank you so much, Coach. And.